sound clash though. Like, let's stick let's stick to the script here. Like, who do you want to clash? Who's the who who are the who, you know who are the oppositions here? Who are we clashing it's right no, now? No one. We don't really clash. We're not a clashing sound. <laughs> but if you were to be a clash, just don't try to dodge a question. <laughs> I, 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 I can't lie. I'll take anyone on at the rebel culture clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. would quite happily do that. I mean, I'm not trying to spend tens of thousands of my own money just to go and do a clash in Birmingham or whatever. But um, I, I feel like because we like such varied music mm -hmm. and T's so good on the mic, we could clash anyone. Mm -hmm. And and and. What's the word? Like, crush them. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Bit. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, good to be. It's good for you to be here. Serves you right. Subscribe, push the button, you know what it is. And if you're feeling jolly, get yourself onto the Television app, free download, iPhone, Android for all the sporting art, street culture. That's what we do over here, baby, from graft to b-boy into <coughs> sound systems. Yeah. It's carnival time, people. <laughs> it's that time of the year. For those of you that are in the West, uh, which of course is best, it's where uh, half of the world descend and uh, take out Notting Hill. Well, we have one sound here that has been the purveyors of uh, hip hop and beyond. Uh, years and years and years, as a young boy understands, seeing these guys come up. One extra as well. Oh my goodness, Tyrannosaurus Rampage Sound. Hey. How are we? How are we? How's it going, gentlemen? Yeah, it's going good, mate. Yeah. It's going good. Well, we yeah. know what's what's been happening. What's been happening? So um, yeah, we've been active. We've been well active this year. Um, we had a really good event with an orchestra at the Barbican, Jules Buckley Orchestra. Shout out to Jules. Um, that was really good. Wow. We've been hosting stages. We hosted a Fifty First State City Splash was the start of the uh, festival season. Listenership's up on the radio show. It's going, mm. it's going good at the minute. It feels like everything's like patterning up for you guys. And I guess this time of the year is like peak, peak movements, peak activation. Yeah, it's mad. And it's nice to come here and do this in somewhere in West London. Mm. Somewhere, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a secret. It's not your business. <laughs> on the carnival route. On the carnival route, Jerry. <laughs> And uh, you guys are, you know, you are 360 hip hop, you guys. You're, yeah. you're strict, like, from graph to everything. Early doors, yeah. hip hop heads. Right? Well, I was saying earlier, like, obviously, I watch your podcast a lot mm. and have bought quite a lot of bits and pieces from seeing people on your thing and thinking, oh, they look cool. Let me check out their work. So, like, graph panic, writers, yeah, yeah, like panic stuff, um, some Abbott's bits. Um, I think I've got a diet at home. Diet, yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, start DMing them and they've obviously all been to our sound at Carnival as mm. well. So, make like new mates and be like yeah i like your stuff and they're like yeah we like your sound and so yeah it's cool man oh man that is that is not no, i mean you know let's let's not take any away from the fact that as soon as you see rampage dm you it's like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> what's going on here like that's awesome man it's awesome tell us a bit about the history for rampage um more notably obviously for, for carnival but give us a background on what, how it all began i mean it was um mike and richie originally mike anthony and richie p started um, Rampage originally. Um, and it was like Mike and Richard and Mike performing and giving entertainment. Mm -hmm. And they started doing like house parties in South London. I was in another sound at the mm -hmm. time. And I started going to their house parties and their, their parties were incredible. And the thing that they started doing, they were the first guys on the circuit mm -hmm. to be multi-genre. So even though, yeah, we love hip hop, we also love R&B, we love dance hall, we mm -hmm. love all the other styles. And they were the only guys on the circuit. So. Um, uh, pretty soon after that, I started working with them. We uh, done a jungle album, and then I joined the sound, and that was kind of like the inception of it. Psycho, Doctor Psycho was in the sound as well. Doctor Psycho, rest in peace, um, man. Wow. And that was kind of the beginning of the sound. Uh, way back, what we're talking like thirty years ago, something mm -hmm. like that. And um, yeah, we just kept going. So we're kind of like the Temptations or the Commodores. Mm -hmm. What well, a member might join or a member might leave. Our newest member, he doesn't even feel like a new member anymore because he's been around for about a decade already, is Maurice, mm, you know mm. what I mean? But yeah, it's just part of the progression of Grand Page Sound. And here we are today, 2023. Oh, I mean, you must have seen a lot of action. <laughs> Carnival is, by default, lawless. If it ain't lawless, it ain't fun. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. You must have seen a heap of action and stories that are probably not best said on podcasts, I'm sure. Yeah, like playing Lethal Bees Pal and the, the, all the entire road trying to rip up every tree. Like, just because they were so excited to hear Pal was like a real movement. Miss Dynamite was one. A surreal moment just looking across and seeing Mark Ronson DJing and most Def hosting for him. It's like, oh, that's weird. Wow. Get me. So, how yeah, we got. Happen? How did that happen? Was that you? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Yeah, because he, he, before he was in Rampage, he, what he specialised in was turning up with a million acts. Hey, look, I've got Mary J. Blige with me. Hey, look, I've got Shaggy with me. Yo. No, well, my day job's on my radio plugger. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there'd be artists coming over from America or Jamaica or wherever who obviously wanted to be at Carnival. Mm-hmm. And um, you had to go to Rampage, otherwise it weren't really worth going. So normally always try and end up there. So, you know, one year I'd take Swiss Beats or Dynamite or who else did I bring there? Lloyd. Um, busy I don't Signal. Remember that. No, I, I don't bring Busy. Pierre brought Busy. Um, who was the one? Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie. I've got... With David Hay and Ryan Babble. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so obviously, like, I've got this big American artist that no one recognised and we're with a world championship boxer and a Liverpool player who were getting all the attention. So I had to run ahead and be like, yo, that's Ryan Leslie, just to make sure that he felt nice as well. I hope Ryan Leslie doesn't watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that trip, actually? Go on. We, I, Ryan Leslie was signed to Island Records and so we had a meeting after Carnival and there was a young boy who got brought to meet him who he was like his idol. Who do you think it was? M and E K. M and E K. Really? Like fourteen or something. Was right. he Island Records? Wow. Like, yeah. Wow. Small world. It is. Yeah. Um with Carl I mean, it's also heavily secure. And very rare do you get the opportunity to have a space to do something. There's licensing now and all sorts of things. You know, you can't even cut a coconut open without having some sort of, you know, uh, license. Um, a lot of people will be wondering, how, how on earth do you even get a sound on the carnival? Um, yeah, you have to uh, apply it to the board. There's a, a board for each carnival discipline, for like pans, mass, sound systems. And you have to apply to the board. Uh, do a bit of research, mm. go and look around the carnival footprint and see if you can find an available space. If, you, if you're if you sensible, you'll know that they originally started, there was about 44 sound systems in carnival. Mm. There's now only about 33. Mm. So if you know what you're doing, you can find a good site, apply to the carnival board, and if they okay it, then off you go. But then you've got to find your infrastructure. You've got to mm. do your rigging, you've got to do your, your sound system, public liability insurance mm. generator. All of that kind of stuff as well. So. Jenny, man, cool. I bet that well, as well. How we started was Mike actually used to live on the road that we're now on. Right. So one year, about 30 years ago, they'd been out gigging. He was asleep. Midday, the window started rattling, you know, because of the bass and that. Looked out the window. There was a sound playing outside the thing. The following year, they weren't there. So You're not going to say the sound it was? No, I'm not going to say it. So. <laughs> yeah. We don't promote other sounds. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's they're my people. And I'm not dissing no one, <laughs> like how you lot normally do. Well, it's not a diss, though, is it? And right. and and, I, and he loves to give give us loads. All right. It was soul to soul. <laughs> yeah, shout out Jazzy because well he Jazzy. loves to give us loads when he's ready. <laughs> Big up Jazzy. <laughs> anyway, so they weren't there. Mike went to the board, which actually was his uncle. His uncle was in a sound called Rap Attack, <laughs> the original West London sound, and said. I want to play at Carnival. They said, well, there's no roads. And he was like, what about my road? So the first time they did it, they took the electricity from his flat, just ran the power cable, cable out and what? did it like that. Yeah. That is so gully. Yeah, 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 Scaffolding yeah. for the staging. Uh, apparently that year when they done it, when they run the power, it wasn't actually from Mike's flat, it was from one of his neighbour's flats. And apparently every time the neighbour turned their washing machine on, you could hear them really? coming out of the sound system. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's precursor dubstep, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So it's really raw the way that, it, you know, the inception of Rampage was like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The scaffolding, if it rained, it was a health and safety issue. It's just a ladder to go up there. We had, we had a few artists who, like, didn't want to go, didn't want to perform because they were like, I've got to go up that. And I'm like, yeah, you better get, get your ass up yeah, there. Yeah, it's the business, isn't it? It's proper... Oh, daunting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But it's a lot better now. We've got proper staging and stuff now. But yeah, the inception was a bit bashy. Yeah. What's the, what's the, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a, as a fan first, I'm just asking real fucking simple questions because I genuinely want to know. Things like, you know, the team. It's, you know, how many people does it take to set the rig up? Like, who, who, you know, is there a, is there a, a structure of, um, you know, uh, head XYZ, manager yeah. this, for this? I mean, Rampage as a DJ collective is me, T, Mike. Yeah. Me now looks after Carnival for us, so she does all the meetings with all the different board people, with the police, with council, the residents, yeah. council, everything else. She has a team of three or four people. Um, we have a photographer, we have a videographer who will be like with us every year and mm. throughout the year. You know, we have 30 team security who come specifically that we pay to mm -hmm. keep the road safe. We have riggers, we have, um, you know, sound team, which is probably three or four people. Drivers. Staging team, probably three or four people. Girl. So it's probably Whoa. about 50, 60 people working over the weekend. That is insane. Um, and um, so who 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 oversees all of this? I bet your WhatsApp group must be bonkers. This is ridiculous. Me now, our event coordinator uh, oversees all of the coordination. So we can more or less give it over to her. And even mm. if there are any inquiries. So for example, someone rang me today about doing giveaways. Mm. And I have to refer to her, like, what's the situation? Can we do it? Can we not do it? And whatever she says, it's like, all right, cool. Then I go back to them and say, yes, you can do this or you can't do that. Um, but she, yeah, she handles all of the logistics and just uh, refers back to us for, oh, we need this or can we do that? Mm. How much space have we got and so on? But yeah, Minel uh, takes a lot of the uh, work off our hands. Mm. And I, I guess sponsors have to play a really big part in this because obviously with, with that kind of, you know, team project and that scale of uh, of uh, sound, it, it must be one hell of a, <laughs> a pricey yeah, it's not, event. It's not, it's not cheap. Um, yeah, it's not cheap. Um, well, people think we make money. They're like, how do you do it? And we're like, we pay for it ourselves yeah, or we get a sponsor. You know? Yeah, we always usually end up putting a couple of grand of our own money in, usually. But um, if we don't have a sponsor, like what people don't understand is if we don't have a sponsor, we can't do it. Mm essentially, because it's thousands and thousands of pounds. If we do do it without a sponsor, then we're bankrupting ourselves, essentially. Mm. It's not thousands and thousands, it's like house money, pretty oh. much. Yeah. <laughs> That's thousands yeah. and thousands. Well, yeah, but you it's understand. tens of thousands. Yeah. So it's essentially, it's a, con it's a contingency that you kind of take stock over the year and then you just put it into it. If we have to, we've right. done that before, but... Um, yeah. Most of the time, we'll start in January mm. trying to talk to a sponsor. And um, shout out to Amazon. Plus four four. They've done it for the last couple of years for us. Mm. And should um, be with us next year as well. They understand the um, cultural significance of Carnival. Mm. They understand what we're about. Um, we've known them for a long time. They all used to work for the BBC. Mm. Um, so it's nice to find. I mean, we've been lucky with sponsors, isn't it? We've always had people who yeah. have been respectful of the culture and haven't tried to be like, oh, you lot have got to wear a pink tracksuit or you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Mm -hmm. It's always been very collaborative. Yeah. And, um, uh, and in modern day, you find that uh, a lot of corporates are trying to, are becoming more aware. So like 2019, um, we done it with Adidas mm. and they were super on the thing of, we don't want to be obtrusive. We don't want to get in the way. We just want to support what you're doing. Mm. And um, we're getting that and then some from Amazon. Obviously, Amazon are uh, more involved in the music, so they're even more involved in helping us set up the stage. But it's also always about a partnership. We want to partner with you uh, uh, in this event as opposed to taking it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that. Sometimes it can be quite overimposing, can't it, for some brands? I don't actually get that feeling. Plus four, four are awesome, man. I yeah. think as a, as a channel... What they're doing is yeah. great. Yeah, they're doing a lot of good content. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you must have seen that over these, just UT with all of the decades of, you know, one extra now, you know, and, and moving into all these, you know, we bucked, we bucked many, 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 many years ago. Of, uh, you know what I mean? So uh, I've seen all different uh, guises. And when you see something like Plus Four Four or the Killer Keller podcast, you, 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 you know, you're, you're kind of already in the establishment and you must have seen a lot of these sorts of things in the past and, and, the fact that Rampage has been a constant through the whole of that is is, is crazy. It, it is a bit, but not that crazy because what else are we going to do? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, if we're quite good at what we do and we've uh, been successful at it for a couple of decades, then we might as well keep going. But the uh, biggest thing for us is looking for uh, new avenues or how to expand. So, like I said before, the Barbican with an orchestra was something new for us. 
this expansion. Awesome. And um, taking on festival stages and curation and stuff like that mm. is another expansion. Putting out records and doing music. So we're always trying to push the, the barrier. There's never like an end, mm. you know what I mean? It's that as well, because you guys are... It's, and it's rare that you have a, 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 a DJ set up, a, a sound that is so diverse. You know, brand wise, it's like it's way out there now, and it, it, you know, there's there's not a lot of competition for you guys out there, really. When you look at it, the scope in which you guys are coming in on. Um, for me, it's just because we've kept going in it. They've, they, I've seen competition come up and disappear, like over the past two, three decades. There's been people who have come up who have almost had the exact same blueprint mm -hmm. as Rampage, mm -hmm. and sometimes they shout at you, "I'm better than you," and you're like, "All right, cool, crack Bring on." Bring it crack on, you know what I mean? We'll see where you are in a decade's time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so, yeah, so it's not, we're not that unique, but our le longevity is unique. Most of the people who we started with have kind of retired now or stopped. Um, but I think it's the intentions of why you're doing it as well. We do it because we love it. Mm. Like, we're not doing it to make money. Mm. And so why would you give up? You yeah. know, my missus is always on at me like, you're never going to retire. And I'm like, why would I? Mm, yeah. Because I love what I do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know exactly what you mean. Sound clash, though. Like, let's, stick, let's stick to the script here. Like, who do you want to clash? Who's the, who, who are the, who, you know, who are the oppositions here? Who are we clashing it's right it's now? No one. We don't really clash. We're not a clashing sound. <laughs> but if you were to be a clash, just don't try to dodge a question. <laughs> I, 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 I can't lie, I'll take anyone on at the Rebel Culture Clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll yeah. quite happily do that. I mean, I'm not trying to spend tens of thousands of my own money just to go and do a clash in Birmingham or whatever. But um, I, I feel like because we like such varied music mm -hmm. and T's so good on the mic, we could clash anyone. Mm -hmm. And, 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 What's the word? Like, crush them. Mm. Yeah, that. Mm. Destroy, decimate. <laughs> I mean, we've always been cocky with it. So as a sound, like, I'm, I'm not afraid of anyone. No. Like, I'll take on anyone. It's just that uh, there's no really no one in my class. I don't want to clash no one because mm. I'm giving you a come up now. Mm. Really. Like, yeah, you're giving them the alley. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, who are you? Like, I'll tell you a better thing. And this is not people that we would want to clash. These are people you respect. Stone Love. Stone Love. Heartless Crew. Mm-hmm. Rudigan, mm. Saxon, 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 really good one, Saxon, we. Um, who else is there? Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro, mm. Mighty Crown. Yeah, mm. I like Warrior Sound from <laughs> Germany. Oh, yeah. I like I like um, Renaissance. I like uh, Shashamani from Africa. There's a lot of sounds, good sounds. I like I like um, what Black Chinese do from um, Miami. Yeah, because they take the dance or when they mix it with a lot of the hip hop yeah, a lot of remixes. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Black Chinese sick. Mm. Man, now you're just running off all these names. I'm like, wow, what a scene! What an incredible scene it is, and one that doesn't always get, you know, widely reported. Yeah, yeah. Like, what other outside of Notting Hill? What what other? Um, you know, what other events are there where sounds and sound clashes take place? I mean, Red Bull, there was a Red Bull one, obviously, that, which um, I really rated, I loved that. But what about in terms of regular events? Well, there's World Cup clash still, as far as I know, there's UK Cup, Cup clash still. There's the War Report, which is um, Alan from Saxon's thing. Um, there's the Jamrock Cruise, there's a mm. crash on that. Yeah, crash on, clash that, on the sea, yeah. Which they're trying to get us to do, and like, we'll come and play, we're not clashing. Though. I'm not no. trying to get buried by Mighty Crown no, 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 at no. sea. I think Mighty Crown have actually retired now, there's a new Japanese sound, but yeah. Um, uh, probably, Matt Aron will probably still be there, yeah. and it's just, them guys are specialists in that, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not trying to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. Pressure. Yeah. The funny thing, because obviously I'm at the back playing the music. So T's the one that takes the real pressure because he's standing at the front yeah, yeah. Like watching people's face when they're looking at you like that. Like, yeah. Looking at you like, how are you going to answer that? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too much. The pressure's real, isn't it? The pressure's immense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know the kind of... Do you know the selection? The more going to be playing at any point? Are you like... Oh yeah, yeah, we got this. I know exactly where he's going to go with this one. Is that is that is there that kind of relationship that you guys have? Yeah, I mean, once you've done a few sets, you kind of have a, a bit of a routine, and you kind of know. So mm. maybe every five minutes or whatever, I might turn around and say, "We play next, or we should go here next, or play that next, or I want to say something, so play this record." Mm. But we kind of know and kind of have a, a bit of a routine. So I know usually 
if this record comes, usually it's going to be that record. Mm. I might introduce it prior to you, and occasionally mm. I'll be like, yeah, I want some Drake, and he plays something else. Mm. And they're like, oh, right, I've messed up this time. Mm. I didn't know what was coming, really. But yeah, usually, you know, what's going on. Yeah. And what we do a lot as well is like, you know, we always try and arrive an hour early, have a look at what's happening, look at the crowd, see what everyone else has played, and try and work out, all right, what's our start point? So, like, last week we did... Um, the Six Music Stage at Stormzy's Festival. Wicked. The girl before us, wicked DJ, a bit more left field than us. Mm. So it was quite housey and just different to what we play. So mm. we were like, all right, cool. Looking at the people that are out there now, if we start with funky, you can move from funky into... Afro beats. Afro beats. Or dancehall. Dancehall, garage, yeah. whatever, and, and not lose who's in front of you already, but keep bringing yeah, more yeah. people mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. See, you remember, um, well, we actually spoke on WhatsApp about this. You know, Big up my crew, Roadblock, another wicked sound, come on. Uh, yeah, just talking about the idea of doing showcases. And, and you were quick to you know, admit that you know, when it comes to doing showcased events at Carnival, it gets lost on people. Sometimes it can be like, it well, can be a bit of a... people come out to party. Yeah. yeah. And, and we found that, like, they want to see artists, but they want to hear songs that they know already. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like... They're here for a party, and if you put too many artists on and it's two stop start, you can see them getting a bit agitated. Can you see that in the crowd? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like totally. Even if it's an artist they know, and they, they, and they, and the artist has that confidence of, oh, they know me, and they start with a record they know. You can get away with doing one, maybe two. They don't. But a lot of artists start to think, oh, this is me. Mm. And by the time they're the third record in, you can see on the faces like. Get on with it. We're waiting for your next big what? tune and get off. Play you know another I mean? cartel. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sometimes it can get a bit funny if an artist uh, drags on for too long. Essentially, if you're coming to Carnival, you're coming to uh, showcase your best seven minutes and get the hell out. Got to be your best seven minutes yeah. or else they're just going to disappear. Yeah. So, big up Reds, by the way. Big up Reds, uh, my guy. Um, I remember doing his float. It was me and a couple other people beatbox on the float. Right. Oh, it's just a, you know, just the energy. You saw Reds the other day. Oh, that's my guy. That's mm -hmm. my guy. Big up Reds. Big yeah. up Creds. Come on. Uh, yeah, so I, I've had first-hand that experience of being on one of the floats moving around and, and the, you know, the pageantry of it all. It's just so good, man. So good. So who have you got planned? What's, what's planned for, for this weekend? Come on! What's going on? Are, are we allowed to even say? I don't think we can what say. I don't think we can say. Oh, shoot. Pe people you've heard of. Uh, there's a few movie stars passing through. Yeah. There's Stop a few uh, people that are currently in the top ten passing through. There's some pe a lot. Some there's people a lot. from Jamaica, some people from America. Some people from the UK. I can't handle you. A few Tuesday. people from Africa. You can't be dead. A couple of people from Africa. You've heard of them. Yeah, really? You've heard, heard of them. You've heard of them. Oh, can't, you can't, you can't. We're getting in trouble. I can say one thing, though. It ain't going to be Burner Boy because he didn't want to walk. Oh, right. He didn't want to walk? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's, is that, that's, not, that's the principle of the car. Yeah, but it? some people don't realise and they think, what? I can't get special dispensation and just drive my car. Well, I can't get a car right to drive to, to the set. Uh, no, you no. can't. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 that we had doesn't it one work year like that. with yeah. Mary J. Blige, where we spoke to her for months, planning this thing, did a walkthrough with her security and everything else, and then the day before, her husband called the Met Police and said, "I need a car to be able to go Can through." Can I get a police escort? And right. the head of Kensington and Chelsea just came and spoke to us. And was that? Like, no, that can't happen. She can't come and perform. So obviously, once you call them and say, "Look, they're saying it's a health and safety risk. You can't come." They want to come even more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. At that point, they were like, "No, no, we will walk. We will walk. Don't yeah. worry." <laughs> the danger. These little, these little strangers love a bit of danger. <laughs> love it. Strangers to the to the dance to the carnival. I mean, even that story alone, you must have a ton of stories. With, like the whole idea of Mary J. Flies going through carnival. I mean, th these are you know, places where they get stopped every single. St Second, uh, you know. yeah. but in general, people are, are don't mob them like that. They 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 might get stopped, but it's genuinely like, oh my god, can I get a picture or whatever? And it's never usually trouble with when artists are coming. It's always usually people are just gassed to be like, oh my god, where are you not going? And if they actually say, oh, I'm going to a rampage, they usually run off mm -hmm. and like run in front of them to try and get mm -hmm. to the the sound system before the artist gets there. So I've never ever seen. Anything go over the top <clears throat> when someone's seen an artist. It's always just like fanboying and mm. fan fangirling, mm. you know what I mean? You do get it, though, if it's like a heartthrob-type artist. 
girls will want to follow. So when I brought Lloyd, remember when we tried to leave the thing to go back to the car, you'd have like a hundred screaming girls just following you. Wow, right sounds away like a down hard fucking street. life, man. Wow, <laughs> you know what I mean? It must be really hard for him, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd was doing some bits back yeah, then as well. Was, he was, he, yeah. The biggest, biggest song, hands yeah. down. Yeah. That was getting full rotation. Um, what have you noticed that's changed a lot about Carnival over the years? Anything, you know, positives and negatives? It's far more regulation. Um, the health and safety thing, like we said before, mm. you could just set up with two milk crates and some scaffolding. Yeah. That's not running anymore. Mm. Health and safety means that every sound system and even all the other um, disciplines, bands, so on and so forth, you have loads of rules that you have to observe in order to make sure that the people who come um, mm. are safe. Um, and, and the other biggest change for me is from when I was a kid is the seven o'clock finish as opposed to nine. First time I went to Carnival, finish, <laughs> used to finish at 11 o'clock. It's crazy, crazy. Wow. Um, but even that, I don't need, necessarily need it back because I've got a gig in the evening time. So seven o'clock's a fine finish for me now. Mm. But those are the two kind of biggest changes I've seen. Mm. What about you, Jen? What about you? I think the same, really. Like, there's more regulations, which means the costs go up. Um, everything has to be... Um, crossing the I's and dotting the T's now. Like, you can't mess around. Like, we've had it one year where we'd built our stage and there was one block slightly out and the health and safety guy was like, nah, you need to take the whole thing down and, and change it. Wow. And Well, de-rig the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, luckily, we worked our way around it and fixed it without having to take the whole thing down. But, like, you know, they're much more serious about crowd safety and mm. everything else now, which is a good thing. But it, it makes it a lot more difficult in terms of, like, the costs just go way, mm. yeah. way higher. Mm. Do you th is that a good example of, like, on the 11th hour, something really going wrong? You know, you wait all year for this thing and then all of a sudden something like that, which, you know, within, a, 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 you know, a, a millimetre away from something, you've got to jog that back up. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to take you the whole day to fucking do well, it. Well, you just have to get on with it. Like, we had it last year. We had a new staging and sound team mm. and they underestimated how long it would take to, to, to get set it all up. set, yeah. So, you know, you're meant to switch on at 12. Yeah. At 12, me and T were hanging off railings, pinning banners and it's doing all kinds it's... of stuff. And people were like, why are you doing this? And I'm like, because it's our sound and we need to switch on. Yeah. You know, we're organising a 10-man crew to lift the speakers up huh? because we need to get switched on. Yeah, yeah. 10-man crew. This is some serious effort, man. Like, it, it, it take, must take a year to... Get everything to this point, you know. It's not, it's not, not for the faint-hearted, is it? Yeah, it can it can be stressy, but obviously the rewards are, are are great. You know what I mean? What are the rewards? I mean, the the rewards for us is getting to play at carnival on, on, on the biggest road, mm. um, and like having a, a real significant impact on the culture. Bad so time. When, when I look back over the years, I think, oh, how many people have come to see us at, and performed? Like Sean Paul, Tiny mm. Temper, Shaggy, Stormzy, this mm. one, that mm. one, like. I've managed to achieve something, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, you have. <laughs> fucking incredible. And, you know, it's a fucking pleasure having you guys in the fucking pot trap, for starters. You know the thing for me, what, like, my first experience of Carnival was Rampage. Mm. And went there at 15 was like, fuck, what is, what is this thing? I want to do this. Mm. And, like, you know, last week we went out and we saw Bashi. Nice. And Bashi has said the same thing, you know, performing at Rampage. He used to be in the crowd at Rampage with, yeah. when he was 15. Yeah. You know? Big up Bashi, another local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when he's in the country, of course. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He's, mm. he's a superstar actor personality now. He's, yeah, yeah. Big up Bashi. Oh, is it Ashley Thomas? Mm, yeah. yeah. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny how... Oh, no, it's not Ashley Thomas, is it? I think it is. Think it full is. name? Yeah. Full name? Yeah, comment below, you know what it is. <laughs> um, it's... Uh, it must be crazy to see the development of the artists that you have had on Carnival over the years and all of a sudden. I mean, Stormzy's a freaky one, isn't it? Yeah. Stormzy's a freaky one. Like, he was already quite big when he came and now he's like, psh, it's a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just... It's a mad one, but I, I, we really like Stormzy. Stormzy is a gentleman. 
because he doesn't forget, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, he really helped us out 2019 at Carnival. And when we've seen him on a... Like, I've spent seasons, like, in Napa or whatever, doing beach parties. Mm. And then when we've seen him over here, surrounded by flappers and hangers on, he'll still be like, oh, what were you saying? Mm. Make sure he comes and says hello. So, yeah, I really check for Storms. He's a good lad. Yeah, oh, that's lovely. I love it. That's, 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 that, that's, those are the high points, aren't they? When you've, you really feel you've contributed to someone's um, career uh, to the point that they remember that. To that, to that, to that extent, you know, very fucking cool. So uh, the radio show, uh, one extra on and popping, and then of course you just had the orchestra event at Embankment. So I mean, these are these are other avenues that you know cross cross the streams of mm. of, of Rampage Brand. Did the you radio show is it? sick because really it's just us two cracking our own stupid jokes Absolutely. And, and playing music. Yeah, yeah. You know, like T's got this foot fetish, so. We, we put it out to the nation to send in pictures of their toes and stuff and mm -hmm. they'll send in their pictures and they'll send in pictures of what they're having for their dinner because we do it on Sunday afternoons and when we go and DJ up and down the country people will come and chat to us about like oh you're the guy that likes barbecue or oh, you're, you're the one who's got likes feet yeah <laughs> and like it, it's amazing for me anyway to to think we're sitting just off Oxford Street chatting absolute shit on air yeah. and playing music we love yeah and it's hitting the whole country. Or even like, you know, people text us from Canada and Kenya and stuff. Mm. Oh, that's as beautiful. Well. Yeah, 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 it's because it's international. Yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of need to be a sound once you've got like that, that platform that, you know, acts as a beacon telling people that. And again, it's rare, like not a lot of people have this. You know, you mentioned Shy FX, big up Shy FX and, you know, Jazzy B and, and all of that. But um, yeah, Mastermind was used to be around here. Back, right. back they still are. Yeah. They're still here, yeah, yeah. big up uh, Mastermind. Near the Saints, big up Lewis. Yeah. That's it, Mastermind sound, come on, man. I mean, North Weezy has got heritage in hip-hop, and it's 50 years of it now, so, yeah. you know, what, uh, what gems are you going to be pulling out uh, in terms of tune? I mean, 50 years of hip-hop. There's, there's got to be some gold coming out of this, of this set for Carnival. Yeah, I think, I think what will ring off well uh, this year will be, like, some DMX, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, the Dre's and the Snoop's and all that, like, a lot of the classic um, hip-hop bangers. Mm. Um, what is a shame is you can't really go back because, like, most of the audience are going to be, like, 19 years old. Yeah. So you can't play a Houdini yeah. or a Curtis Blow. Yeah. Just, like, it's just going to go above their heads. Off, yeah. Yeah, no. But classic hip-hop bangers will ring off. And I think we, we need to show some respect to 50 years of hip-hop mm. with some DMX and Dre and them yeah. kind of yeah. 50 Cent, like. Drop It Like His Heart, Lean Back. Like, that era, like, the kind of neptune Z. Mm. Eve, who's that girl? What's love? Timberland. Even that's a bit more of the yeah, commercial yeah. side of things. Under twenty five, love that stuff. Yeah. Now. Isn't it mad? Isn't it? Because yeah. I mean, we, we we all remember that era. Quite defining, actually, because you know I was coming up through my career. You guys were doing your thing. Um, yeah, these these are you know these are anthems in my mind um, that that really they epitomised the era. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's their old school now, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's their Lufa. Well, the, most of them, their parents played it. Yeah. You know, I've got three kids. My daughter's like, Dad, have you heard of Wu-Tang Clan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have, actually. <laughs> I love that. Does that ever surprise... Have, they, have, have the kids been to Carnival yet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What's the vibe on that? They love it. They love it. They love it. You know what's mad for me is um, I've got nieces and nephews and they're like in their mid and late twenties now. Mm. And like two of them are actually working for me at Carnival. Oh, now. that's sick. Yeah, awesome. Man. Yeah, man. I love that, keeping um, the family. I, and, the, and they've got kids, so one of them, the, the oldest one, I ask his daughter, like, oh, mm -hmm. who's the hottest thing? Mm -hmm. Who's the hottest thing? It's number one, Steve Block Europe. I said, like, what? It's not even American acts anymore. And the number one favourite act, Steve Block Europe. And the second was was uh, a UK act. And it's only when she got to the third one, she named an American, like, a little Dirk or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's not like, wow, we've come this far. Come this far, yeah. I mean, you know, UK hip-hop through to grime... Through to, you know, drum and bass stuff, so well, you know, these genres that, you know, I think we, we take ourselves for granted as a country that, that we've brought in so much weight. Of yeah, I mean, styles and I don't drums. think we realise that, um, or it's not so, it's so much complacency, but it's a natural thing for us in the UK that we invent shit, you know what I mean? We just invent shit, we invent grime, we invented UKG. Yeah. We, we invented our style of drill and trap. We yeah. just invent shit because that's how we are. Yeah. Like, if you come up and you like a bit of dancehall, like even when we do studio sessions, like a bit of dancehall, mm. like a bit of hip hop, mm. we can just combine the two, sample that, sample that, put a snare on it, yeah. let's see what's cooking, you know what I mean? Yeah, 
love it, love it. And we go even further back, you know, the, the movement of Northern Soul to Scar, you know, and all these different genres that kind of helped build what, what became um, uh, the, 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 well, drum and bass, I think, uh, you know, lent its hand in being influenced by those genres. I know, I know UK hip-hop certainly did. We, we were arguing on the radio the other day because I was saying hip-hop came from Jamaica. Yeah, because he's <laughs> nonsense. Because, <laughs> be, because of the, uh, the myth of cool DJ Herc being the first guy it's to start hip-hop. No, it's not so, No, the myth is that he's responsible for it. I'm not saying that cool Herc wasn't playing music in his car and doing house parties and all that, but people are saying, oh, when he mixed that record with that record in the house party, that was the start of hip-hop. I beg to differ. Mm. But right. that's like saying what's the first jungle it, record. Or exactly. Record. Because Everyone it, has a different answer. It, was it the first time Crazy Legs done the Crazy Legs? Or was it the first time someone put a piece on a wall? You can't definitively say that's the start of hip-hop because there's so many elements to it. Yeah. Most of the world agree that it's all hurt that started <laughs> it. Who was a Jamaican playing on a sound system. And he played the, when he played the sound system, it was in the Bronx, New York. Started yeah. in New York. So my point was, was that <laughs> Jungle and all these other things from Britain, you know, they were made from people of the Windrush generation importing reggae music and rock steady and everything else and then making their own twist to it, mm. you know? And then, and then comes the sound systems and the culture just is embraced by all the different genres of music. And that's the best thing at the moment about, about Britain, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, it was funny with this 50 years of hip-hop thing because um, when you actually look and try and name, like, UK hip-hop artists, they're not necessarily, in inverted commas, hip-hop artists because, no, you're going to name, like, the old-school guys, like London Posse, Demon yeah. Boys or whatever. But then when it's new school, people who aren't classed as hip-hop, like we named Kano and, mm. and Retch Free too, people like that, they rap. Mm -hmm. They rap. Mm -hmm. But just the music isn't necessarily classed as hip-hop. But it's hip-hop, really, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or hip -hop children of hip-hop. roots, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it does baffle me when people don't go dig deep enough into your, you know, your ice picks and your, you know, your um, demon boys and your London posses and your, do you know what I mean? You, you get really into, you know, MCD, yeah. MCD, you know? Music of Life. Yeah. Shout out Simon Harris. Mm. Oh, yo. MC Mello. MC, MC Mello. Mello. I see Mello the other day. Yeah. He's around the corner from me. Oh, God. John, John Z D. When John Z D and Mello did that South um, Bank show, you remember that? That program used to be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and they yeah, were yeah. doing the rap thing. It just blew my mind. I was so young. I was like, "Yo, that's incredible!" Should pick up John D all the time. MC Mello. Um, what's the future, boys? What is the future? Give me some more. More and more. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like there definitely to be a Rampage album. I think we've got an album in us along the lines of a Soul to Soul or a Massive Attack or something like that. Brilliant. Um, obviously doing more shows. Bigger and better shows. Bigger festivals. We're trying to put together our own festival at the minute. Um, but at the moment, we're still curating stages and stuff. So, yeah, uh, bigger shows, um, festival, singles and an album. More radio, more DJing. Just, it's not even, just what we do. Yeah. You know, keep, to be able to continue to do what we love doing, I think, is, mm. is the plan. And on that note, it only leaves you to do one thing, and that's get your pretty little asses to Carnival this weekend. It's going to be a banger. It's going to be a blitz. It's going to be Rampage. Make some noise for Rampage wherever you are. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Pie poppers. <laughs> Yo, we're out of our fashion killer cat giving it to you all. Subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right? Stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Easy. Yeah. No.